Hello, welcome to our small tutorial about particle pack. I will show you how to play with it, uh, material features, shade the features, and yeah, let's start. After you import our pack into Unity Standard Render, you can notice that uh, shaders throw errors because of the missing library. And this library you could find in Package Manager in Shader Graph uh, pack. I hope this uh, will be as a default library inside engine in the future, uh, but until now, until that, you have to simply import shader graph and it will fill missing libraries. It only happened in Unity standard at HTLP and URP, uh, you don't have to do this. Anyway, after you import uh, shader graph, simply check all these shaders which throw errors and click reimport and all problems will be gone uh, this is how it works until unity will add these libraries uh, another tip is that if you use unity standard uh, and you don't have a post processing at your project remember that emissive materials at Unity Engine appear only when there is a Bloom post-processing effect at your camera and screen. So uh, no matter how you will add this to the project, for example, you could use this from Package Manager and Unity post-processing effect, or you could use any other from the Asset Store if you use them. Uh, but if you want to have an emission at your screen, simply you need Bloom. So, uh, for example, we'll use Unity post processing. Mm. It may happen that at our demo scene, if even there's a post processing layer, it didn't, I would say, appear. Mm. You you will have to simply re add it again. Mm. It happened in few engine versions but it's just few seconds fix. Okay, so we have a emissive effect at our screen. Mm. If you use mobiles, uh, you could leave it like that. If you use uh, PC, I would suggest to use uh, linear rendering. Uh, it worked with post-processing much better. It's, I would say, more flexible than gamma rendering. So if you want to change it, simply go to project settings and in uh, player setting change rendering to linear. I feel like it looks much, much better. After it reimport textures, you could see that everything looks as it should and emissive and everything works fine. And you could see that without bloom, there is no emission at your screen. So remember about this effect. In fact, uh, emission at your screen is a combination of two things. Bloom intensity and emission power at uh, material. So for different scenes, I guess you should uh, play with these two values. If, if you use HTRP or URP, remember to import HT RP or URP support packs. Mm. There is also README for HTRP and information about diffusion profiles, which are important uh, for HTRP subsurface scattering effects. Uh, for URP, you simply import this uh, file. These files will replace uh, prefabs, shaders, materials just for your uh, RP version. Uh, so remember about that. Okay, let's take a look on the materials and shaders and shading type. You could see there is a light map, light map, light, prefabs, uh, normal, normal light. Uh, there is an unlit light map and unlit normal. Let's take a look on each of these materials. So first, the difference between uh, lit normal material and light material. In fact, uh, light material use 
rendering pass low resolution it's only available at HTRP and it greatly reduced uh, overdraw and um, rendering uh, usage in fact remember that it looks a bit worse I feel I feel like it loses resolution with this uh, low resolution option and in fact it also lose depth bright I mean between low resolution materials there is no such effect like we have here but uh, if you have a two uh, particles and one is low resolution the second is not there could be such a uh, ugly effect like you saw before okay uh, another option that we have is that you could use light map based material or normal map based material normal map based material is the most expensive but I feel like it has the best depth of the smoke uh, light map are a bit cheaper uh, but three they look uh, still very good mm. there is also uh, lit and unlit versions of the materials uh, unlit version of the materials work only with directional light they are not affected by other light than directional light you could see that if we will put point light uh, in our scene and let's increase uh, intensity because it's HDRP the lit materials which are of course more expensive uh, are properly affected by light point but if we will move this uh, light point into unlit materials they are not affected by it so in place uh, for example when there will where there will be only directional light I rather uh, advise to use unlit materials because they are really cheaper in render and they really look good too uh, but in place where there will be multiple lights and effects I guess uh, lit material are the best option okay so material values step by step of course we have alpha uh, threshold and multiply as a setup at our material so you could modify these values and get specific effect that you would like to get you could manage the light intensity that affect the particles you could change the light contrast as well uh, you could change the color of the light I mean you could change the light color which uh, affect our uh, particles and you could change blending between directional light and the light color, color as well uh, there is a shadow color setup as well you could modify it mm. about emission you could change the emission color and for example emission over time so you could make the whole small become emissive or only bottom part with contrast you could you know just adjust the effect so the emission will blend or gun more sharp or less okay there is also uh, input textures which are basically flip book uh, so whole animation is at the texture uh, with normal strength uh, you could manage that uh, the power of the normal map but remember to have use normal uh, option at material you don't have to use it it's a nice effect I feel but maybe it could be too hard of course there's a other PBR setup like smoothness some occlusion because it's lead material uh, if you will use HDRP uh, you will get also diffusion profile and thickness setup so you could manage the thickness of the uh, smoke and how it reacts with uh, light as a subsurface uh, scattered uh, material there is also blending option so particle will nicely blend with opaque object uh, you could turn it off and you could notice that there are hard edges uh, remember that this blending option doesn't work 
at mobiles. So for mobiles, turn that off. <clears throat> you could of course uh, adjust the blending power so uh, you could get nice smooth uh, blending between uh, op object and uh, particle. Uh, cooling start and cooling distance uh, would make particle more transparent when the camera is closer to the particle. So you will not have a, a smoke particle on your face, uh, but it will smooth it. Uh, about wind, uh, you have two options for wind. One is wind from the center or by edge. Uh, for uh, wind uh, from the center is rather for explosions, while uh, uh, by edge is for smoke because particle uh, life is longer and uh, simply it become more affected by wind. With gust and shiver strength you could manage how particle will behave on the wind and uh, I feel it's a matter of taste. If we go back to emission for a moment we could see there's an emission procedural uh, or mask option. Mask is uh, on the texture, procedural is a procedural function and you can see they have different effects. Mm. About wind, if we back to wind, you could see that uh, if we change wind direction uh, at wind prefab, uh, our um, smoke will change direction too. Uh, remember, if you use wind, to have uh, our wind prefab at your scene. Mm. And yeah, I feel it's all about the wind. Uh, it's pretty simple to set up. Uh, you could see that uh, its uh, particles react very flexible on the on the wind. Uh, and yeah, if we look about a normal uh, map-based material, it works pretty the same. It has uh, different, of course, input because it doesn't uh, input light map, mm, but the whole setup, I guess, are almost the same. It have the same options, just the input texture is different. Uh, unlit, uh, so the cheapest uh, material doesn't have a PBR input, so no ambient occlusion, no uh, smoothness, metallic uh, options, but uh, in fact, uh, it's the fastest material. Okay, now let's look on the fire materials. Uh, basically, fire is unlit because, uh, in fact, fire is a source of the light. So, like every unlit material, it will be only affected by directional light. Uh, you could see that you could manage uh, alpha power uh, and uh, switch if uh, alpha should come from texture or not. You could adjust emission power as well, um, emission color, uh, you could adjust wind. I feel like the wind is the core of the uh, fire effect because in fact if you will place multiple fires uh, at one place uh, it may happen that you will notice a bit tilling between them and with wind uh, where the every particles have pretty different shape because of the uh, local and global wind uh, value you will notice that uh, it truly become alive i mean look you could adjust how uh, wind uh, react on the mine uh, wind speed and how it shiver so you know you know you get nice noise effect uh, local effect uh, like in the smoke you have uh, use transparency intersection option so you could nicely blend uh, fire with opaque objects uh, remember this option doesn't work at mobiles uh, anyway I feel it's all for this tutorial. I hope uh, everything is clear. If not, contact our support. I will simply 
answer the question and help you with your uh, problems.